Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, I would like to introduce a new model profiling capability available in Amazon SageMaker Debugger. And we just announced it at AWS reInvent. This uh, profiling capability makes it super easy to profile your training jobs without any change required to your training code. Let me show you how this works using a PyTorch training job. Okay. Just like when you use SageMaker Debugger for debugging purposes, the only thing you need to do for model profiling is to pass a profiling configuration to your estimator. Okay, so again, you don't need to change your code. Uh, you could add specific API calls in your training code if you wanted to uh, enable or disable profiling at certain points uh, in your code. So here's right. a simple profiling configuration where I just enable profiling and capture events every second. You could uh, list specific steps between which you want to capture information. If you want to focus on a specific uh, part of the process here, we're just going to capture everything. Okay. So let's run that cell. And the next. And then the rest is just a SageMaker training job. We select a PyTorch image. We're going to train for 20 epochs, so that should be long enough to see real-time events in SageMaker Studio. And then we just fire up the training job, okay? Passing the profiling config, right? Nothing weird. Okay, just run this. All right, and off it goes. So let's just wait for a few minutes and uh, we should start seeing real-time events. My training job has started and uh, I can see it obviously in the experiments uh, view. And if you click on open debugger for insights, you're going to jump into this view here. Okay, so it has an overview which uh, will be uh, displayed once the job is over. And if you want to see real time information, you should go to nodes. And here, this isn't a distributed training job. So I only see one node. But obviously, uh, SageMaker Debugger supports distributed training, so you would see um, graphs for uh, each node in the training cluster. Okay, so what do we see here? We see CPU utilization over time, network utilization over time, and we see, well, the GPU hasn't really started working yet. So let's uh, give it a minute or two. We see a heat map which is pretty cool. So we see the different CPUs here and we see the GPU, right? And it's not working yet. And uh, we're going to see a few more things, right? As the training job actually starts. Okay, so let's wait for a couple of minutes and we'll see more. Now we can see the GPU is actually working. We see GPU utilization is about 40% and GPU memory is about 30%. And we can also see on the heat map that the GPU has started to work. If we had a multi-GPU instance, of course, we would see uh, multiple uh, rows for the different GPUs. Okay. We also start to see additional metrics. For example, we see framework metrics. So these would be, uh, in this case, PyTorch metrics, uh, showing us how much time is uh, spent in the different uh, phases of, uh, of the training job right uh, forward propagation data loading backward propagation etc etc we can also see individual data points for each training step so for example we can see here uh, forward propagation for step 101 lasted 31 milliseconds and this took 70 milliseconds and you know backward propagation lasted 38 etc so you can you can see you know how much time and the respective amount of time that each uh, phase in your training job takes. And that could help you pinpoint you know, problems. If one of those really takes a long time and slows training down, then you know where to look, right? I think that's, uh, that's pretty useful. Okay, and uh, we can see, yeah, this is, uh, this is moving along, right? And that GPU is not crazy busy. So let's see if we can learn more about this. Let's wait for the training job to complete and uh, we'll look at those graphs one last time and then we'll look at the profiling report 
and insights that SageMaker Debuggers gives us. So once the training job is complete, uh, you should go up there and click on download report. And this will download an HTML report of the training job. We'll take a look at it in a second. Uh, this is also available in S3 at the output location for your job. And you'll see a profiler output uh, folder with uh, the HTML report and a Python notebook. Okay, so let's look at those. And of course, you get uh, additional uh, information in those extra folders. So if you want to go and parse your profiling events and, and build your own analysis, of course, yeah, they're available. Okay, so let's look at the HTML report. So what do we see here? Well, we see a training job summary. So my job lasted for quite a while, right? And of course, most of the time was spent training, as you would expect, right? 92%. I see some system use, usage statistics. Uh, here again, this wasn't a distributed job, so I only have one node, but you would get per node stats. Okay, so CPU, GPU usage, um, CPU memory, etc., etc. I see some framework metrics, how much time was spent um, in training and eval evaluation phases. Okay. How much time was spent uh, forward propagating and backward propagating? What's the ratio between CPU, GPU operators? And then uh, metrics on the, the framework steps, which we saw in the real-time graphs. Uh, so data loading and forward propagating, backward propagating, etc. And then we can see the most expensive CPU operators. And that's useful because if you want to optimize your uh, your code, you know you need to know uh, which operations are the uh, most costly from a, a performance perspective. And we see the same for GPU, right? So no surprise, this is the the convolution stuff that's taking the, the most time, and particularly backward propagation for convolution. So uh, that's good to know. And we also see rules. So just like SageMaker Debugger, when you're working with debugging, uh, you know, but just like when you're debugging with uh, SageMaker Debugger, um, the, the profiling capability also includes built-in rules that are triggered if certain conditions are detected in your training process. So, so this one tells us there, there has been a large increase in GPU memory consumption. Uh, and we need to keep an eye on that because, of course, if we get close to the to maximum uh, usage, then obviously we want to pick uh, a larger instance. So here I don't think that was the case. Uh, we can check. Uh, GPU memory. Now, nah, GPU memory did increase brutally, but yeah, <laughs> that's the the start and then it kind of stayed there right so no i think this one this one's good we don't need to worry about this low gpu utilization was triggered a few times and uh yeah let's take a look at the graphs yeah it never really exceeded 40 percent, which i think is too low right um so as we see this thing in real time, we could we could decide after five minutes or ten minutes that this isn't a really good job, and uh, and of course we could uh, we could stop the training job if we wanted to. And the rules are actually uh, connected to CloudWatch events, so you could automate that as well. You could capture uh, the a low GPU memory usage event and and trigger or maybe a lambda function that would stop the the low performing training job that's possible you can do that um, that kind of thing okay so sure we would need to work on uh, increasing um, GPU memory usage and well the other one that was triggered was batch size um, and these are kind of linked because if you have a small batch size then you don't feed uh, a lot of data to the GPU in one go. 
So, um, well, that doesn't fill GPU memory for one. And, and, and the second problem is, of course, as there isn't a large amount of data to work on, you don't put a lot of GPU cores to work. So uh, good practice would be to increase batch size until you fill up GPU memory uh, completely. So here I think we trained with 512 as the batch size and uh, GPU memory is only, let's say, a third full. So we can certainly double it or triple it. Um, the, the, the data set is large enough that we could work with a large batch size and, and uh, without hitting training problems. So increasing this is, uh, is a good idea for sure. Okay, and it would solve certainly uh, uh, low GPU utilization or at least improve it, maybe not solve it, but improve it. And we have a few, uh, a few rules here being triggered, a few occurrences of the data loader rules, uh, which says that hmm, maybe we can increase the number of uh, cores working on data loading. Okay. Uh, again, just to keep a steady flow of uh, of data between uh, the between the instance and its GPU, basically, right? And the other rules are okay, right? No CPU bottleneck, no I/O bottleneck. Okay, so these are built-in rules, uh, and uh, and you'll be able to add your own, just like in SageMaker Debugger. Okay, so that's the HTML report. Now, what about notebook report well it is the same thing except it's a notebook so you can run those cells and you can actually reproduce um, the graphs that you uh, that you see here okay this notebook will let you build this report and customize it so you can understand exactly how the graphs were built you can uh, you can zoom in on specific periods of time or specific events uh, you can copy and paste the code, add that to your own reports, monitoring system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So this is pretty cool. Full visibility into into the report. Okay. So that's the de uh, SageMaker debugger in uh, in profiling mode. Right. I think it's uh, it's a really great tool. No code changes at all. Just run this with your existing training code with a simple profiling configuration. And you get a real-time view on your job, uh, letting you stop and manually or automatically with CloudWatch events, uh, low-performance, uh, low-performing jobs, right, with low GPU usage and whatnot. And um, and in any case, you get uh, lots of information on uh, you know framework metrics and uh, and training metrics and infrastructure metrics. And these uh, are really precious in making sure you make optimal use of you, the, the SageMaker infrastructure. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool, right? Uh, and there's more stuff here. I didn't look into that. Well, you can see there's always more in this report. You can keep exploring. <laughs> right. I think that's, uh, that's enough for today. I'm sure we'll come back to uh, SageMaker debugger and future videos. Until then, keep rocking.